Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about stream ciphers. Okay. So stream ciphers and in particular, we are going to study about the stream cipher RC code. Okay. So let's uh, study about what are stream ciphers. Um, we have already learned what one time pad is in the first module. So in one time pad, what was the speciality of that? Likewise, how much ever was the length of the message? The same length was for the key also, right? So it was actually encrypting in a stream format. Each bit by bit of that particular plain text need to be encrypted using the bit of that key. Okay, so that is the uh, functionality of a one time pad. So stream ciphers are in general one time pad. Okay, so now what's uh, the basic characteristic of stream cipher? Stream ciphers are initialized with a short key. So when you start off with encryption in the stream cipher, they have only a short key. And this short key, they are going to stretch it to make it into a key stream. So the stretching process is like you have to do some kind of pseudo random generation in order to stretch that short key and make it into a key stream. Okay, so that is what is happening in a stream cipher. Okay. And the key stream is used like a one time pad. So once the key is generated, now you can perform an XOR with the plain text in order to generate the uh, cipher text. Let's see with an example how this can be done. Okay, so this is the general structure of a stream cipher. As you can see, this is the short key which I was mentioning about. Okay, so this is the small key or the short key. This short key is given to a pseudo random generator and this generator will generate a key stream. So that is what is represented here by the small k. Okay. Once the key stream is generated, the next function here is to perform an XOR operation with the plain text bit streams and then you generate a cipher text. Okay. So let's take a small example. Like for example, the plain text here I'm going to use is uh, let's take it as 110011. Okay. And the cipher, and the, not the cipher text, the key stream that is generated is, for example, suppose the key that was given is, suppose if it is 1001, something like that. And the stream generator, key stream generator, it after performing certain functionalities, it generated a key stream like suppose uh, it is something like this 1 1 0 1 1 okay if suppose it is uh, the plain text is this one and the key stream after the pseudo random key generation is this one. So what is actually done in a stream cipher? You perform an XOR operation with the plain text and the key stream that was generated after the pseudo random byte generator. So when you perform a normal XOR operation, how is it? So it is if it is same values that is if it is 1 and 1, it means it is 0 here, then it is 0 here, here also it is 0 and 0 which is 0 here. 0 and 1 it is a different value so it is 1 here 1 and 1 it is 0 here and then 1 and 0 it is 1 here so this is the cipher text you get after performing the XOR operation okay XOR operation of the plain text and the key string okay now after this uh, operation how do you perform the decryption you give the same cipher text to perform the XOR operation, okay. So you're using the same key K, you're giving it to the pseudo random number generator. The pseudo random number generator will give you the same key stream, okay. So this will be the key stream that will be generated, and this key stream and the cipher text when you XOR it, you will get back the plain text. Let's see if you get back it. So the cipher is uh, 101 three zeros and then the key stream is 011011 okay so you're going to perform an XOR operation here once I perform the XOR operation let's see what I'll get so 0 and 1 is 1 0 and 1 is 1 0 and 0 is 0 0 and 1 and 1 is 0 0 and 1 is 1 and 1 see I got back my plain text here so this is the simple operation that is happening inside a stream.
screen cipher okay so there will be a pseudo random generator this pseudo random generator will be having an input which is the key which is generally a short key that is being given using the short key a key stream is being generated this key stream performs an xor operation with the plain text stream to generate the cipher text stream and this is repeated uh, in the opposite direction to get back your uh, plain text back that is the cipher text is performed an xor with the same key stream to get back your plain text so this is the simple structure of a stream cipher or what happens inside a stream cipher now moving on to the stream cipher properties okay some of the design considerations which you have to think about when you are doing a stream cipher is that you have to use the key is such a such a way that it has long periods with no repetitions that means the pseudo random key that has been used right the pseudo random key that has been used should be repeated or should not be repeated uh, very frequently that is you have to maximum extend the repetition of the pseudo random key okay so there should be a long period without any repetition of the pseudo random key since it is a randomly generated key there is a probability that after some time this randomly generated key might get repeated so however long the repetition is the stream cipher will be as much stronger okay so the longer the repetition long repetitions means stronger the uh, style cipher will be okay now the next point or the property is that it should be statistically random that is the key that has been generated or the key stream that has been generated should be a random that is the number of ones and the number of zeros should be equally distributed it should be randomly distributed okay then the next point is that the strength of the stream cipher it all depends upon the key that is being used which key the short key which i was mentioning earlier so how much length this key is that much strength the stream cipher will be okay so generally it is uh, 128 bit keys that are being used in stream ciphers so uh, once you use this 128 bit keys then it will be much better then the next point is that it is a large linear complexity the key that is used to generate this uh, key streams should provide you a large linear complexity so these are the major design considerations which you have to keep in mind when you are going to design a specific stream cipher okay so when you are properly designing a specific keys keys a stream and using that key stream when you're mm, performing a stream cipher encryption it is said to be much secure or it should be secure as a block cipher okay so it is said to be as secured as a block cipher if you are using these design consideration okay and the benefit of a stream cipher is it is much simple and faster because as you can see from the above function there is no much mathematical functionalities that is involved it is just an XOR operation that has been performed in a stream cipher encryption the strength is all depending upon the key streams and the key that has been used and the pseudo random property that has been used it is only these three things that count the strength so eventually this stream cipher is much simpler and faster okay now let's have a small uh, peep into what is means by uh, random numbers we have seen pseudo random numbers now let's see what is the relevance of random numbers in cryptography okay so random numbers from the name itself you can understand that those are numbers that are generated randomly right so it is just generated based upon some function or some algorithm or something like that okay so where are these random numbers used in cryptography they are used as initialization vectors in certain algorithms they might be used as session keys they can be used in public key generation and they can also be used for key stream generation like we just saw so these are the different uses of random numbers generally in cryptography and in all its cases the critical factors that determined the random number is that the random number they should be statistically random you cannot just uh, have a pattern in the random number generation the random number should be statically random and it should have a uniform distribution that is the number of ones and zeros that are used in this uh, key or in the random number should be uniformly distributed and it should be independent of its own 
it should be unpredictable that is if a random number is given it should be unpredictable to pred uh, unpredictable for the next random number that can be generated or the future numbers that need to be generated you will never be able to predict a random number given a current random number you will not be able to predict a future random number given a current random number okay so that is about the random numbers now let's have a small look into what is random numbers pseudo random numbers and pseudo random functions okay so first one is called as true random number generator okay so in this true random number generator you give some source of true randomness to the function and a stream of bits are being generated okay so it is just based upon certain uh, conversion to binary function or some functions will be there which will generate certain kind of random bit streams okay so no specific algorithms are being used in this true random number generation so this is said to be basically non deterministic okay so uh, in cryptography you can either use true random number generation or pseudo random number generation or you can use a pseudo random function these three things can be used in cryptography in rc4 algorithm which we are going to discuss next we are going to use this the second one which is called a pseudo random bit streams now what is the pseudo random bit streams the speciality of pseudo random bit stream is that there is a deterministic algorithm so based upon this deterministic algorithm and the seed the seed is nothing but the key or the short key which we give so based upon that key and the algorithm the random numbers are getting generated now what about the pseudo random functions in pseudo random functions apart from the deterministic algorithm and from the seed there is another third con uh, content which is called as context specific values uh, which could be either uh, user id uh, session id something like that okay so the only difference is that they also use another component which is user id and session id in order to generate the pseudo random values okay so the key and this user id and session id together is given to the deterministic algorithm to give you the pseudo random value this is the pseudo random function this is pseudo random number generation where you don't have context specific values you just have the seed and the deterministic algorithm here you just use some key and based upon the conversion to binary you just generate some random keys okay now uh, we are going to see about the pseudo random number generation requirement because in the next algorithm which we are going to discuss we are going to use the specific specific property of random numbers okay so pseudo random number generation is that uh, the requirement is that they should be random they should be uniform scalable and consistent and you should be uh, using a random number in such a way that it is unpredictable that is you cannot predict the random numbers that can be coming in the forward direction or in the backward direction so what was previously generated also you cannot predict and what is going to be generated also you cannot predict okay so that is called as the unpredictability then the characteristic of the seed that is uh, it should be secure if known adversary can determine the output so must be random or pseudo random number so the key that has been provided to the pseudo random number that is also important okay how lengthy that particular key is or how strong that key is that also determines the mm, pseudo random number generation okay so that is about the pseudo random number requirement now we are going to the rc4 algorithm which is quite a simple algorithm because as we have already seen the stream cipher itself is very simple so rc4 is also going to be a simple mechanism okay so this is an encryption algorithm which was invented by ron rives the basic property is that they use a variable key size and they are byte oriented stream ciphers that is uh, eight bits together they use in order to perform the stream cipher encryption so that is why it is called as byte oriented stream cipher so the key length is variable but generally they use uh, 128 bit or uh, 64 bit key sizes okay so the longer the key size the better will be um, the encryption algorithm okay and where is it used it is used for secure socket layer transport layer security etc okay ssl and tls which you will study in the fifth module uh, these are specific layers where security is required or it is also used in web browsers and servers okay so um, so about this particular topic i just wanted to say some application of this stream cipher so the stream ciphers are generally used in 
browsers where a stream of data need to be sent okay stream of data is like a, for in a communication or when you are chatting or something like that in that cases in this web browsers or in this communication channel stream of data is been sent over the communication channel so one application is there in the stream ciphers okay and um, in case of uh, block cipher the application is file transfers emails database etc okay so these are some of the applications so this uh, stream cipher or rc4 can be used in uh, wireless lan standards also so wep and wpa are two protocols that are used for wireless transfer uh, transfer of data in these uh, wireless transfer mechanism also rc4 or the stream cipher encryption algorithm rc4 is generally being used okay so that is about the uses of rc4 now we saw the variable key size and we also saw who invented rc4 now moving on to the block diagram of rc4 this is quite simple you have a secret key or a short key which is k we are giving it to the rc4 block diagram so here inside the rc4 block diagram some pseudo random functionality is being done okay so pseudo uh, random generation is being performed inside this rc4 block and after the pseudo random generation what you get is a key stream okay so this is small k this key stream and the plain text you are performing an xor operation to get your encrypted text so that is about the block diagram of rc4 which is uh, very strong and it is very easy to implement also now let's move on to what is happening inside the rc4 there are only two functionalities that are being performed inside an rc4 encryption first function is a key scheduling algorithm that is being performed and then the second function a pseudo random generation algorithm okay only these two functions are being performed inside an rc4 what is the functionality that is happening inside a key scheduling algorithm a key scheduling algorithm is nothing but it will generate certain arrays called as state arrays you generally represent it represent state arrays s of i okay so after this key scheduling algorithm you generate certain state arrays and this state arrays are given to this second function that is pseudo random generation algorithm to generate a key stream and this key stream is xored with the plain text to get the encrypted text so this is all what happens inside rc4 now let's move on to the um, first step that is key scheduling algorithm okay so this is key scheduling algorithm so what happens inside key scheduling algorithm is that as i said earlier they are used to generate certain state arrays okay so let's see how the state arrays are being generated first you are going to you use the secret key that is the k to initialize and permutation of the state vector s is done in two steps okay so the first step is initialization of the state array and in the second step it is the permutation of the state array so that brings together the key scheduling algorithm okay now the next one let's move on to what is happening inside this key scheduling algorithm first you are going to initialize i is equal to 0 to 255 okay and then you are going to initialize this i to s of i that is you are initializing each component okay of i to the state array okay so uh, let's set the values of um, s from 0 to 255 so which means that first s of 0 will be having 0 s of 1 will be having 1 s of 2 will be having 2 and s of 255 255 will be having 255 so this is what is happening also you are creating a state array okay now next you are going to create a temporary array which is called as t of i okay so now what you are going to do is that in this temporary array you are going to store this state array components okay so here uh, k stands for the secret key or the short key which we were actually discussing about okay so each of this short key bits are being first stored inside this temporary array so k i mode of k this mode of k means this is the length of k so whatever is the length of k that is being uh, shifted to the t of i 
So I'll explain it with this diagram. Uh, here it shows a detailed diagram of what is happening inside the algorithm. So this is the state array. So S of 0 to S of 255 you have the state array. This is the key that is being provided. That is the total length of the key is given here. And this is the temporary array which we were talking about. So what is getting stored inside the temporary array is each bit from the key is being stored inside the temporary array. Okay. So K of 0 is loaded into T of 0. K of 1 is loaded into T of 1. K of 2 is loaded into T of uh, 2. Likewise, it gets loaded until the length of the key is over. Once the length of the key is over and you have the temporary array length extended till here, then what you will do? You will start repeatedly storing the same key bits in the next coming uh, key uh, in the temporary arrays. Okay, so that's what happening. So again, it is being repeated and stored here. Okay. So that is what is, so K is repeated as many times as necessary to fill out this particular temporary array. So that is what is stored, uh, shown in this three steps. You are initializing the state array and you are filling out the temporary array as many times as necessary to fill out the T. Okay, so that is uh, I mode K means zero mode if suppose K length is 255, okay. 0 mode 255 is 0 itself. So, k of 0 will be t of 0. Now, when i is equal to 1, it means 1 mode 255, which is 1 itself, which is k of 1 is loaded into t of 1. When i becomes 2, it is k of 2 mode 255, which is k of 2 itself, which is loaded into uh, the temporary array t. So, that is why it is k of 0. Here, it is t of 0. It is stored here. k of 1 in stored here k of 2 stored here, k of 3 stored here. Once the length of this key is over, now again the t, it is repeated here. So, 0 here, 1, 2, 3, likewise it is getting repeated as long as the t gets filled out. So, that is what is happening in the initialization step. Now, in the second step in the uh, key scheduling algorithm, the second step what they are doing is just a permutation of what is stored inside the state array. So, in order to permute the state array, you perform these many functions. You initialize another variable j with 0 from you start a loop from 0 to 255 and uh, j is loaded with the value j plus s of i plus t of i. So, here in this second part, now again you are not going to use this secret key k. From now onwards, it is s of i and t of i which you are going to use throughout in the algorithm. That is the state array and the temporary array which we, we have just created. Only these two will be used in the further algorithms. You are, you are stopping the use of the secret key or the short key uh, once after you have generated the temporary array. Okay, So, j uh, is now generated using j plus s of i plus t of i mode 256 and now you are just gener uh, swapping s of i and s of j. So, what is happening here in this function is that whatever that was present in that state array is getting just permuted or from s0 to s255 whatever it was present they are getting just permuted or shifted. You are just swapping it. s will still contain the numbers from 0 to 255 because no other function is applied here. You are just trying to swap or bring out a permutation here. So, all those numbers are getting permuted. So, this is shown here detailed here. That is initial permutation. So, you are just using uh, S and T here. So, using J, you are creating J equal to J plus S of I plus T of I. So, you take T of I and you take S of I and if suppose J is a value uh, 0, then 0 plus whatever was S of I and whatever was T of I, that is getting swapped into S of J. So, you are just swapping it or bringing out a permutations. So, that is all what happens inside the key scheduling algorithm. So, with that part, you finished the generation of state array or the first part of the RC4. 
now the second part is quite simple that is pseudo random number generation okay pseudo random number generation is nothing but you are generating a pseudo random number and in order to generate the pseudo random number again you are not using any functionality you are just making use of the state array which was previously used okay so you are initializing i and j two variables with zero and uh, for more bytes to encrypt you are creating i plus 1 mode 256 j is equal to j plus s of i mode 256 you are swapping s of i and s of j and you are getting a key stream k which is nothing but s of i plus s of j mode 256 okay so let's have a uh, look into what's happening inside this so suppose this is the state array so this is the state array okay so what's happening inside the pseudo random number generation is that you have s of i and s of j okay you're taking those two values you are doing a addition operation okay and after doing an addition operation you get s of i plus s of j which will point to another particular cell in this state array okay and that mode 256 will give you the key stream k okay so s of i plus s of j mode 256 if suppose s of i is 0 and s of j was also 0 0 plus 0 mode 256 will give you 0 itself okay so s of 0 it will point to s of 0 so s of 0 will be the key okay in case if i and j if it is 0 then it will point to s of 0 so this will be the key stream okay in the first case okay now this repeats until how many bytes are there to encrypt now in the second case i becomes 2 and suppose for example i becomes 2 and j becomes 2 okay or uh, i becomes uh, 2 and j becomes 2 which means that s of 2 and s of uh, and s of 2 so whatever was present in s of 2 and uh, s of uh, 2 will be added together and a mode 256 is applied and then that particular value is taken from the state array to provide as a key stream so likewise the key streams are getting generated and after the key stream is generated what is the next function to do you are going to perform an XOR operation of that particular key stream and that message component okay m of i that is the first byte of that message only one single stream is being XOR that one single time right so this is what happens after the uh, key generation step so only till here the key generation is there this step is the XOR operation of the key stream and the uh, cipher text uh, key stream and the plain text okay so this is what is happening in the pseudo random uh, generation step so let's have a look at the overall operation of rc4 so this is the first step that was happening that is state uh, and key initialization which is done only once this is the state array that was getting generated and the um, key streams that is the uh, short key or the secret key and this is the state array and then after what happens is that the state array gets a permutation so the same values are being permuted in this and you get back the state array here and inside uh, the next step that is pseudo random number generation what happens is that again it is a sort of permutation that is happening that is that state array is there and you get permuted value of that same state array to get 8 bits or the key stream which is the small k this key stream with the plain text 8 bits is perform an XOR operation to get the 8 bits of cipher text and this repeats for the next block of the message and next block of the message until the entire message or the entire stream of message is being um, encrypted okay so once again let's have a small uh, brief look into what is happening inside the rc4 first step was the key scheduling algorithm where you are generating a state array and using that state array you are using a temporary array and using these two arrays we are going to swap the content inside the state array or permute the state array this is happening inside the key scheduling algorithm once the permuted state array is available you are again performing a swap function and performing an addition of these swapped uh, state arrays and performing a mode 256 to generate the key streams 
and this key streams are performed an XOR operation with the message stream in order to get the cipher string. Okay, so this is what is happening inside the RC4 encryption algorithm. And in, in order to perform the decryption, as, as I've already shown in the first example, for decryption, it is just the cipher text XORed with the same key stream to get back your plain text, right? So this is what is shown here. So you're generating the key stream by running the same key generation or the key scheduling algorithm and the pseudo random generation algorithm and XORing the key stream with the encrypted text will generate the plain text like the example which we saw in the first uh, slide uh, that is using a plain text and a key stream you got a cipher and using that same cipher and the key stream you got back your plain text okay so this is what is happening inside the uh, stream cipher and in particularly RC4 encryption algorithm hope you have understood Thank you.